Uh, I had every plan to entertain you very similar to Tom Thumb just a while ago. But I'm sorry I can't follow that act. I have a scratchy throat. Okay. Uh, very inspiring and intimidating posters that I saw just as I came into TEDx. I am a former TEDx speaker, but I could tell you a lot about flames to ashes. And I can also tell you that people with great passion happen to make almost everything impossible. However, uh, let's get down to the topic that I'd like to chat with you about. Many years ago, I gave a TED talk about designing and building drones in Pakistan. And it covered a lot of the hardships and challenges that one faces working in an environment like our country. Most of the audience at that time was not really aware of what drones were capable of. I think attention focused mainly on the Predator, which was a US-made drone working out of Afghanistan. And the kind of destruction and havoc that it was bringing down, not just on armed militants, but also on innocent civilians. It was a lethal machine that did not distinguish between friend or foe. While his handlers sat and sipped coffee thousands of miles away and just pressed buttons to launch its missiles. As I talk to you today, the role of the drone has been reinvented many times over. And while these lethal machines still exist, I think the role has changed immensely and has been overshadowed by a multitude of other applications. Drones these days are used in farming, in livestock management, in fisheries and coastal monitoring, search and rescue, crop management, civil engineering, area mapping, delivering medicines. You also know that drones are used for taking selfies and shooting wedding videos and covering social events. Today's drones actually can save lives. Now, this is where aerospace and its related technologies, which were basically developed for military use, have just swarmed themselves over into devices that all of you use every day, from your mobile phones, into unmanned or driverless cars, into platforms that can map mineral deposits several meters under the ground. So where does all of this take us? Some time back, along with some other like-minded individuals around the world, I decided to try and reinvent and put our drones to innovative applications to make them useful for developing countries like Pakistan. My talk today will briefly touch upon that vision. A lot of you might be familiar with the simple fact that when you go into a classroom, a lot of the projects that you do, a lot of the concepts that you are taught are not really applied into real world situations, sometimes because of a lack of resources, sometimes because of a lack of time, and sometimes because academic pressures weigh you down. The plan, as far as I was concerned, was very simple. In order to reinvent the drone, we needed to look at the problems that were facing developing countries like Pakistan. So health, medicine, education, communications, water resources management, minerals, search and rescue, security, were all major, major applications. And these were tasks that could not be done alone. Luckily, I was rescued by my students. And a lot of those students helped me initiate a process where step by baby step, we actually started taking students outside the classroom 
and initiating them into critical building and making skills. The plan, again, was very simple. Hold technology workshops, do cutting-edge technology projects, which could initiate students into becoming makers and builders and actually start coming up with innovative solutions. A lot of the times, we were faced with huge hurdles in terms of resources, fundings, and other areas. However, we circumvented a lot of these things. And now, just to discuss some of the projects that we've done over the past few years, and let me tell you once again, there has been a global open sourcing on a lot of these projects. Some of the projects that we have done which directly apply to the environment in our country and other developing countries are building a solar power drone that could act as a communications repeater platform for distance education. Imagine something which can be up in the air over a village school in Thar Parker for several hours. And while the teacher is delivering a lecture to the classroom, the lecture is being beamed up to the drone, and the drone is beaming it to 50 other village schools within a 100 kilometer radius. Another project was developing an unmanned marine vehicle, which could map irrigation pathways and also collect water samples in large water bodies to basically judge water quality and drinkability in large reservoirs. Drones are required to deliver medicines. Drones are required to collect biological samples from remote and inaccessible areas. We develop drones like that, along with students like yourself. Drones are also required to map crops, forests, study crop yield, plant height, and a lot of other things which are needed in Pakistan. Drones use a lot of composite materials, fiberglass, Kevlar, carbon fiber. The whole world, and especially developing countries, suffer from a massive shortage of quality, low-cost housing. Why not convert some of the composite structures technology into creating low-cost housing, which could be assembled within a few hours and have a single tool assembly? Why not send up an environmental and communications package into near space, recover it using drone technologies, and actually be able to figure out the starting point of low Earth, low cost satellites, where you do away with the rocket part, which is the most expensive in terms of launching a satellite. So these and a lot of other things were the projects that we have been working on along with a bunch of inspired youngsters like yourself. We always welcome people like yourselves to come in and work with us. So we have now a talented resource pool of people who are not just engineers, they are architects, they are artists, they are photographers. And we are always looking for people who could be poets, philosophers, thinkers, because these are the people who bring a unique and innovative vision into technology as we know of it today. I know that technical innovation in a country like Pakistan or a restricted environment anywhere in the world is very difficult to achieve. I also know that you struggle each day in building careers, providing some stability to your futures, having a certainty in what you are doing. But I also know that time and again, the only time that I have managed to achieve anything is when I have gone out of my comfort zone and reached out to enrich the lives of others. That is when magical innovation takes place. You might also want to ask that these cutting-edge projects seem to be huge tasks they seem to involve a large amount of budgets and resources, manpower and trained personnel. There's a very famous saying about engineers that their eyes are normally bigger than their budgets. And they normally always believe that they're never in the wrong. I subscribe to both opinions. 
if you are truly passionate, try not to make the impossible happen. Try to make things happen. I think this is the crux of the work that we have done in the past. And I would strongly welcome all of you to join the effort that we are making in creating a resource group where we are trying to put drones into more peaceful and humane applications. If any of you is interested in getting in touch, please do so. Let us get to a level where what we achieve is truly what we are capable of and become the inspiration. Thank you for listening.